If you are new to my channel or haven't been watching my Legends content for a long time, or maybe you just don't watch me stream on Twitch very often, you may not know that I'm kind of known for a very specific deck archetype. The one that was most famous of mine, I called Time to Fight. It's kind of become a running theme uh, for my channel for a number of reasons as a result. But essentially, I love the charge keyword in Legends. I think it's the most powerful keyword in the game. It allows you to always be proactive, always have initiative, and it's just very, very good. And ever since the beta of the game, so we're talking years ago at this point, I've been fascinated with this idea of just trying to build a critical mass of creatures that have charge and treat creatures like burn spells. So if you're familiar with uh, burn spells as a term, then you're probably familiar with Magic the Gathering. That's kind of where that term originates from. Uh, and again, that idea is just you played spells that would deal direct damage to your opponent and try to uh, literally burn them down without any sort of other interaction, right? You're like you're just going straight face with spells uh, same concept in Legends, but instead with charge creatures because it forces your opponent to do uh, two things, right? They have to heal and then they also have to kill your creatures after you've played them and you're hopefully getting immediate value from them. So like you play the creature and you get immediate value in the form of damage and then they have to deal with what you've played, but then they also have to find a way to stabilize. Now, certainly not an impossible task. In fact, I don't even think that the deck is in a good position right now, but... I decided to revisit the deck archetype in my last deck testing video, which was the warrior version. I had a lot of fun doing that because it's, again, just an archetype that I really enjoy. So the other night on stream, I was like, hey, let's let's build a, a bunch of different variants because I've built a lot of different variants over time. The very first one was actually, much like we're going to review today, a Crusader version. I called Ray Chargels. Uh, then there was Charger, then there was the Battle Mage version that was Time to Fight, and so uh, we're going to revisit all of them in a, like a mini deck testing series. Today is going to be uh, a new iteration of Ray Chargel, so this is going to be the Crusader version, and again, it's all about uh, charge and or immediate value, because one of the questions I very frequently get is, you know, hey, this deck is almost all strength. Why aren't you running Mighty Ally? Well, the answer is Mighty Ally doesn't do anything the moment I play it. And that's the entire point. Everything in this deck is designed in a way to either give me immediate value or combine with other cards to provide value. So, uh, has charge. Relentless Raider, if you play it and then break a rune, can give you immediate value. Alit has the summon. Uh, Fifth Legion Trainer, Hopefully you're playing it and a charge creature so that you get, again, a small buff there, and then they still have to deal with the trainer. Um, the Ravager is like the one exception in this list because I have to run a certain number of orcs in order to make Wood Orc Headhunter worth our time, and we want this in here. Um, this does have Prophecy, which is like pseudo charge if you get it off the Prophecy, but this might be the only non-immediate value card in the deck, and it's mostly here because it triggers Wood Orc Headhunter can sometimes help you out with the Prophecy, and it helps smooth out our curve. Um, Clan Captain, again, you can play it, buff other things, so you get immediate value. Charge, charge, uh, you know, great card draw also gives you more reach. Charge, uh, buff, charge, charge. Item is like, uh, you know, immediate value on an existing creature. One Dushnik to, again, help the Headhunter. Uh, the Archer also theoretically can ping face. Uh, Minotaur, Vigilante, Wood Orc, Headhunter. So again, all immediate value. Uh, the other question that I'll get frequently is why don't I run Arms Master? Uh, and the answer to that is actually pretty straightforward. It competes in a slot for Minotaur, and I just think Minotaur is better for a couple of reasons. Um, one, Minotaur does three damage now. Arms Master has the potential to do three damage because you're counting on each of your creatures to essentially uh, hit the board, do their thing, and die. Anything after that is just like extra, but that's what your plan is. You're, you're hoping to get one attack out of them. So out of one attack, Minotaur is worth a base of three, Arms Master is worth two, and then if you get the rally, then it goes up to a base of three. However, that's two and then maybe one. There's no guarantee that one, uh, the rally is going to land on your charge creatures. If rally, for example, lands on your Orc Clan Captain, and your clan captain, you play it and it buffs the creature and then it dies, well, then you got nothing from your rally, right? So it's already a maybe. And this deck empties its hand pretty quickly, so there is a chance that you just 
don't even have a creature in your hand for the Arms Master to buff. You might have cards like Raiding Party or Northwind Outpost that can't get Rally. So Arms Master is a two, maybe a three. Minotaur is always a three. Uh, second, and this is also important, Minotaur's Breakthrough is not irrelevant. Uh, I've said it since I started building these decks back in the beta. For as long as Treeminder is playable, Minotaur has a place in your deck in a charge-heavy list because you can run over Tree Minder and still get the breakthrough damage in. It's very, very nice. So that's why I run Minotaur over Arms Master. But that's enough about the deck. Uh, you know, I wanted to give a little bit more background because in the last one, I kind of like went over it kind of quickly. And since I'm going to do a mini series, if you will, because I had so much fun, thought I would discuss it. Now, uh, we're going to do normal deck testing stuff here. So I'm just going to play two games, win or lose, and show you guys the outcome. Uh, on stream the other night, uh, I played eight games with each of the different variants. So I played eight games with Battle Mage, Charger, uh, Ray Chargers, and uh, the Time to Orc, as I've now renamed it from Chargier because I didn't like that name. Um, but I played eight games with each, and collectively I was at 70% win rate over the night, which I think is much better than I expected because I don't think that the deck is in a good spot right now. Um, Maybe I'm just catching people off guard at the moment. But uh, I, I say this because I'm, I'm doing these because I have fun with this list. This is the sort of thing I enjoy. It kind of makes me giggle. But if during these deck testing uh, videos I go 0-2, like, I'm not going to be surprised. So, um, you know what? I actually think we throw this back, too. I think we are looking for two drops here against Sorcerer. Now, if they don't get their Barrow Stalkers or ways to stabilize, you typically actually have a pretty good matchup against Sorcerer. If they happen to be ones that run like Barrow Stalker plus Mentor's Ring, that this can be an be issue. Handy. But otherwise, you can usually get away with just direct damaging them to death. But yeah, as I was saying, if we go into... It's not going to hurt my feelings by any means because I mostly play these lists Don't to have fun and the fact that they are sometimes successful is just completely a byproduct. So again, every creature you play in here is meant to just give you some sort of immediate value. So the fact that I'm going to lose this here doesn't matter. It gave me my buff and my attack. Now... At some point, we sometimes will throw, like, Candle Hearth to attack over here just to soak. You do have to win the race, so you're not 100% completely uninteractive. But, uh... Alright, we're gonna do it over here. So they do still have the dagger, so they have plenty of ways to blow this up. But if they use the dagger and then they also still don't have a negation or something, then maybe we protect the 5 damage. Either way, we want them to, you know, spend additional resources here. The more resources they're spending and attacking into this, the less damage they're doing to us, and then we get ahead on the uh, the race game plan. Again, is the idea. Okay. So we made him use a lightning bolt. That's still pretty good for us. Oh, uh, interesting. So we have this clan captain here. So we could clan captain and vanguard. Or we could Brawler. Now, the reason I'm leaning more towards Clan Captain and Vanguard is that means that if, if this survives, then we go straight into Wood Orc Headhunter. We stand united. The so, uh, we're going to do that. Storm we're going to do it over here because we don't want this to trade into our Captain. Uh, doing this means it has to be Bolt or Negation. Some sort of Bolt. They might run Fire Bolt, but... Do Essentially, it's got to be one of those two. By the eight, Otherwise, Wood Orc Hunter will come down. All right, so they're going to play the Catapult so that they can, again, uh, try to win the race here. Ready to die. Now, we should still be able to win the race barring a Prophecy because we can get them down to 10, and then we'll have enough. To, to finish them off. I'm not really worried about us dying this next turn. So really, we're just trying to dodge Lightning Bolt. They will pay the blood price. Scorch stump it. For Ulfric Stormcloak. And we can expect to take a minimum of nine this turn and go down to 11 ourselves. 
Now, if we have to, we can try to slow things down with a brawler. Now, they do have a bolt, so I said we have to dodge it. Sadly, they had the second one. But if they don't now have a negation or a harpy, we might still be in a good position. Um, Barrow Stalker would be an issue because of the guard. Okay. So, like I said, would be an issue, is an issue. Training is over. Easy it's as hunting a red schemer in the snow. So we're gonna go ahead and do this Southern just so that we can no. chew through. And they've got nine. Potentially ten with the dagger, so they would only need six. We can't really afford to give them the uh, prophecy here, so if they do hit a prophecy, we 100% just lose. And it's not like they run a lot, but even something like Harpy is, is, is pretty bad for us. Do your work. Whereas uh, here, we're still fine as long as that's the only guard they have. We can plow through that and finish them off with our Vigilante. Oh, they have the negation. Now that, that is potentially an issue. So now we have to do some math here. Uh, outpost gets this back to four. So that would be, yep, yeah, that's not enough. All right. So we have to, this is still worth five. But then we only have two left over. So that would be five, six, seven. In theory. But this by itself is not enough to push through this now. Now the other option we do have is we have this Dushnik over here who can soak, which does appear to be the correct play at the moment. Paired with an outpost to allow these to double trade into this. Leaves this up and still puts us that much closer to a victory the next turn. So, uh, yeah, that negation was, was pretty great at slowing us down. So we have to slow them down uh, equally. I also think we're going to go ahead and ping this. Because, again, I don't want to give them the rune here anyway. So we're going to go with a trade, trade, get them to six. Now, there's no way that they don't have lots of options for activating this catapult. So I expect to take some damage. But again, at the moment, we are simply trying to survive because we have the burst from hand. And that's all that matters. And the fact that this is going over here is very, very helpful for us. So it means we're not likely to take damage there, and that, uh, that's going to be it. Raiding party is icing on the cake. Let's do this. Attack. Let's and do this. Uh, I was really hoping to hear that time Attack. to fight voice line, because that always gives me uh, a big smile. But we got double let's do this. Sparky Pants, please take away let's do this. I don't want to see let's do this. All right. So anyway, that's a victory. We're going to go on to the second game like I do with these. But you see the idea. Um, try to get ahead, use the charge creatures. Uh, as I said, against Sorcerer, as long as you can stay ahead of them in like the race. So Siege Catapult can be a problem if they commit to just trying to race you because five damage every turn is a lot. If you can slow them down just enough and stay ahead of the race, they typically don't have the, the tools to heal and win. You do sometimes run into prophecy issues, but. All right, so Tribunal. Tribunal is interesting. I talked about this on stream the other night quite a bit, actually. I guess this is keepable. I'm not a fan, though. Uh, Tribunal seems like it would be a really bad matchup on paper, but of the three control decks, it's actually the one you want to see the most. Not that you want to see any of the control decks, but the reason that Tribunal ends up being relatively okay 
is it has the least amount of healing. It has a lot of spot removal. I smell but fresh meat. outside of spot removal, it doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with your direct damage. Telvani's got black hand messengers and queens and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so this is this is where the orc shows his uh, liability, sadly. Come and warm I think we're just gonna do that and play the long game here. Um, but most of the time, the spot removal just doesn't matter against Tribunal. Like you play a creature and you're expecting it to die anyway, so as long as it gets its damage in, it's done its job. I mean, that's just that's just it. So. For example, here, we're going to just play a Minotaur and get four damage in. And then they're going to remove it, but we got four damage in. And that's the entirety of the matchup. And you will, against Tribunal, get to a point where you're playing off the top deck. Like, that that's inevitable. Um, but that's okay. Training is over. It's time the battle shall be ours. Here we're going to see if we can bait an ice storm with just the two, but also get our attack for foreign. You will also likely hit prophecies, but again, kind of doesn't matter. You expected your creatures to die anyway. The only thing that really matters is life gain. So Tribunal usually has uh, Initiate, Barrow Stalker, Arch Cannon. Like, those are pretty standard. So predictable. All right, so they did put us at 26, which is uh, good for us if we draw an elite. Interesting. Yeah, this is probably stuff. Right. There was a hesitation there where I could wait and then next turn play these two, and technically that's worth two bonus damage instead of the one, but the more you wait, the more likely they are to draw into life gain, so I think we just take the saturation here. So ideal draws we're looking for going forward are things like Afflicted Elite to draw and deal damage because we'll break the our own room. Of life. Oh, see? And this is why. This is why Minotaur is so good. I would love to top deck a Minotaur right now. All right, Tinkering has the potential to not be great depending on what they run into. Oh. Oh. Ah. oh, so they have a drain creature up near the top and this got drained. So that's probably going to be game just because of randomness. It's always my favorite thing in the world when I lose to uh, RNG, random effects, Let's do this. which also Attack. means that this is going to be an initiate, just calling it right now. This will be a prophecy initiate. No. Let's do this. Fires of all doing. Interesting. There's one in the top three cards. That honestly makes me think I don't play anything else here because I don't want to give it to him for free. Like, he's going to heal five, but he's got to break a rune to do it. So, he'll heal five, and then we'll have to take a trade into that, which makes me sad, but... Oh, this is what it was. Okay. So, this will trade here. Yeah, let's do this. This will trade here. And uh, we'll punch as hard as we can here. They're going to drain a little bit over there back to nine, but we're still in an okay position right now, despite the really bad, like, mimic RNG. We just need him to not get even more drain. Did that guide my for example, if this survives, raiding party top deck is a victory. Wood Orc Headhunter is a victory. Underworld Vigilante is a victory. Minotaur. Rampaging Meme Tar is a victory. So we have a lot of options here. 
a lot of outs, if you will, despite my opponent getting a lot of drain. But again, like as I said, for whatever reason, uh, I know people like think I'm weird when I say it. Uh, Tribunal is of the three control decks your best matchup because when you play against Warrior, they're gonna play a big drain creature and then squish the Wimpy, and they're gonna burst heal a ton, right? Ugh, punished. I smell so many charge options that could have won me the game there, and I draw the third Greystone Ravager. And I did point out that this is the one weak point of this list right now. Like, I get that, but... Kind of a bummer. And yeah, as I said, Talvani just has like a million ways to play Black Hand Messenger, which is an issue, so... All right. I have many important things on Mkano. my mind. We're fine with if you use it as removal because you got to give me a card. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And just like that, we have a victory. They the hunter becomes the hunted. So uh, two and zero oh with the Crusader version of uh, Time to Fight. This one again. When I first made it, I called it Ray Chargels. Um, the idea was that you never see it coming, and. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, the the decks, all the different variants have been doing really well for me over the last couple of days. I, I'm still not convinced it's like very good or well positioned. I think I'm just catching people off guard, but uh, they're fun to play. Tomorrow is going to be the Archer version, and then I'm going to end with a Battle Mage version. So uh, we're going to cover the full gamut. If you haven't seen the Warrior one, that was the previous Legends video I did, I did deck testing. I called it Chargier, but I'm officially rechanging it, uh, renaming it to Time to Orc because I don't like Chargier. And I might even re rename it later because I'm not a huge fan of Time to Orc either. But anyway, if you've made it this far through all of my rambling, thanks for watching. And until next time, may you walk on warm sands.